So this story starts in the year 2000. Well, a vision of it anyway. Fantasies of the future from the past. And most of them, amazingly, have come true. Here's how they imagined Skype, for example. Except something's missing, can you see? It's the future, sure, but it's all kind of mechanical. It's all wood and brass and wires. A hundred years ago, we imagined an entire orchestra being played by just one guy with his feet. But we couldn't, in our wildest dreams, imagine all of these instruments contained inside one of these. <sighs> so at some point in the very recent past, we've made a huge mental leap into a world where paper is pixels and film never fades, where you can forge a Van Gogh with a click of just two buttons. It's so complex and fast moving, but would you believe me if I told you it all rests on the most simple of ideas? An idea so elegant in its simplicity, it powers our information age. Damn it. This is long distance. One moment, please. In the days before the information age, we had a big problem with information itself. Any time you try to send a message from one place to another, something always gets in the way. The original signal is always distorted by noise of some kind. Wherever there is signal, there is also noise. Now I want you all to listen in while I talk on this telephone. So what can you do? Well, back then, the best anyone could do was to boost the signal. But then, of course, all you do is boost the noise. Well, I don't think any of you could really understand what I was saying. Thing is, we were thinking about information all wrong. We were obsessed with what a message meant. A Renoir and a receipt? They're completely different, right? You couldn't possibly think of them in the same way. Or could you? Like so many breakthroughs, the answer came from an unexpected place, a brilliant mathematician with a flair for blackjack. I'd like you to meet Claude Shannon, the most important man you've probably never heard of. OK, let's play a game. Remember this card. Got it? The great thing about mathematicians is all they really care about are numbers. And that's exactly how Claude Shannon saw this problem. He saw information as numbers. So, uh, which card is yours? Well, who knows? But what you do know is that if you were to pick one of these cards at random, you have a 1 in 52 chance of the card being yours, right? For Claude Shannon, any message was just a card on a blackjack table, a probability, one of a whole series of other choices. Whether you were trying to send a love letter or a random string of letters, he didn't care. To him, they were all just probabilities. Now, that's an abstract idea, I know, so let's try and simplify it right down. That's what Shannon did. He said, if information was a probability, what is the most simple probability there is? What is the most simple answer to any question? It's heads or tails, right? Yes or no? On and off? One and zero? He realised that you could take anything, words, music, pictures, and if you could break it down into small enough pieces, you could ask each one a simple question. Yes or no? Shannon published his ideas in 1948, and at just the same time, in the same building actually, a group of engineers were finishing work on one of these. A tiny yes-no answering machine. If the answer is yes, the switch is on. If it's no, the switch is off. One transistor can answer one yes or no question. For example, is this square going to be black or white? The answer can only be a one or a zero, one binary digit or one bit of information. Do that enough times and you have yourself an image. Now, two transistors can answer four questions for each pixel, producing four possible colors. Three transistors can answer eight questions, creating eight bits of information. Four transistors can answer 16 questions, five transistors can answer 32 questions, and up it goes. Now, it doesn't get rid of noise, but sending information in small, discrete pieces makes the chances of errors smaller as well. No matter how complex the digital world is, 
Never forget that it's all built on this simple, solid foundation. That's how it works so well. And Claude Shannon answered a question that no one else was even asking, and in doing so, changed the world forever. I can only think of one other person who's done that. But he was a private man and rarely gave interviews, unless it was about his passion for toys and games. In the cruelest of ironies, the man who gave us the information age lost the last years of his life to Alzheimer's. He died in 2001.